Be sure to tune in. Okay. Still having fun with the audio I gotta the remote. Get, I got to get back into the swing of doing two things at the same time. It's been a while, so give me a break. Yeah, normally you just have to click on the mouse and watch me do all the work. Well, that's okay. I know. That's fine. I have no problem with that. <laughs> no, we need... Oh, the poor little squirter. The squirter has dubbed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not go any further with that Joe Biden impression. Okay, so, hey, Greg Moore's here. He is. He is. Good Speak, morning. Talk to the camera. Good morning. Hello, camera. How are you today? Oh, it just sits there. <laughs> it's, it's happy <laughs> to see you. Watching a squirrel. <laughs> Maybe yeah. we should put a little wig on it or something. And Wouldn't that be fun? That would be fun. Like yeah. uh, from Monsters, Inc. Right. Was it Wazowski? Yeah, yeah. Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. <laughs> yeah, so we are Grok Talk, a production of GraniteRock.com, New Mike Hampshire's Wazowski leading conservative... Mike Wazowski your paperwork again. <laughs> So anyway, it's like of the Dick campaign manager for <laughs> David Booten. Hamana, 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 hamana here. <laughs> Former executive counselor, Wazowski. What was his name? Wazowski. Uh, they named an exit after him. Wazowski. And, and you could dodge the toll by taking that exit. Is that That's perfect? That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. As I was saying, Grok Talk, actually, production of... It's actually the, the exit I get off to go home. Well, there you go. <laughs> I've lost control again. <laughs> squirrel, this is squirrel, a presumption. Squirrel. There's a presumption that you... He's been waiting for months to do that <laughs> to there's, us. First of all, there's some presumption that you had any control to begin with, and I think we need to address that, and that's just that's how it is. Anyway, Greg has joined us. We're talking about control? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, don't worry. Yeah, I'll get you the other, 50 one week, the other 51 <laughs> weeks of the year. Watch out, mister. I own that board, you sir. Do. I know you do. I know you do. I can also Fine. reach that board, sir. I paid for this board, Mr. That's Green. Right. I <laughs> did, literally. So we're at Liberty Forum. Yes. And uh, Greg has joined us. Greg Moore of you know, Americans for Prosperity, I, New Hampshire. Absolutely. I, I, and it's, I find it interesting because... Uh, just yesterday, uh, w one of the other groups who has a different viewpoint from us in terms of uh, New Hampshire uh, put out a press release, a group called Grand Estate Progress. And I, you guys might Zandra know. Rice Krispies. And they, and they came, out attacking, uh, came out attacking us, Liberty Forum, and, and of course because we're, we're working with the, here at Liberty Forum, we have a booth. Um, and I'll tell you this much. From my perspective, I think it's a very interesting dynamic because Liberty Forum exists exclusively for the purposes of attempting to bring people into New Hampshire. Liberty Forum is here to get people to move to New Hampshire. And that's a very different thing from Grand Estate Progress, which is promoting policies that get people to move out of New Hampshire. Exactly. So it's sort of like an interesting sort of uh, you know, dichotomy between the dynamics there. Well, they don't necessarily want people to, m to move out so much as they want to control the people who are here. Well, that has the effect and of causing people to leave, <laughs> go, I, go to I, Texas and North Carolina, oh, well, except for you. You came the other way. Well, I, I, I chose to come here um, for lots of reasons, um, but I still have my Texas passport. Okay, okay. <laughs> Texas passport. Well, remember, it was Cynthia Chase. New Hampshire State Representative Cynthia Chase, right. Democrat, transplant from Rhode, Island. Rhode, Rhode Island, Island, who said that we must take freedom away so that the free staters won't come here. And, you know, you think of that and you'll think of the ramifications. So she wants to penalize all New Hampshire residents now and use that to erect a wall around the state. Now that this progressive has come in, it's like, you know, Hannah locked the door well, that's too freaking bad. And I am so glad that the free state is coming in. Now, I don't agree with them on, a, on quite a few issues that are important to me, but that's okay. That's okay. If you walk around here today, one of the things you learned is not, any, not many people agree on, on everything on here, here at the Liberty Forum. I mean, it's, it's a very, uh, very organic in that there are some baseline set of principles that a lot of these folks share. A lot of them are issues that have to do with free markets, which is why Americans for Prosperity Foundation is here sponsoring, uh, sponsoring a table. But once you get outside of those basic free market principles, you're not going to get much agreement about, um, on this group about, on a whole host of issues. And that's, I think, that's a good thing. The fact that they're able to constructively disagree on so many issues and do it in a way that, that actually advances uh, the dialogue. And they will advance the dialogue. They want the dialogue. Absolutely. They love to have the discussion versus people like Xander Rice Hawkins and a lot of other progressives 
who want to silence the opposition. And that's one of the reasons why I, you know, I've been here almost 30 years now. Oh, gosh, 30 years. But that's, you know, touching the gray hair here, which is off camera. Thank you very much. I need a haircut. I've been here 25. Yeah. But that's, you know, I fell in love after I moved here with the whole ethos of live free or die. And that's why we do what we do. Because we want more um, more freedoms. We want not government deciding for you, like with the tanning beds or Mr. Pierce with his uh, what has to appear on the paper for job application or a whole range of st- stupid things. We make the decisions. It also means that we have to live with the consequences of those decisions, which is what the progressives say. Well, that's a bad bad outcome, so we have to take that away from you because we can't let you hurt yourself. But they like to define and impose the consequences. Oh, that's true. Okay, that's don't true. forget that. They live for consequences. Yeah, they, they wish to impose only a certain kind of morality upon us. But anyways. But I think it's also important, uh, particularly here when we're sitting in Liberty Forum, is, is to, to consider that it's funny. When I talk to a lot of the, the, uh, the, the folks, the attendees, a lot of them aren't from New Hampshire. Correct. And I, th- and I think this is remarkable is that I think that they said uh, more than half aren't from New Hampshire and are people who are considering coming to New Hampshire. And, uh, and, and, it, and it, it's interesting because in our, in our uh, ad we put in the brochure here at, uh, at, at Liberty Forum, we actually used the, the full quote by John Stark, and, and a lot of the attendees mm-hmm. love the full quote, which is, mm-hmm. it's not just live for your die, which we see on our license plates. It's live for your die, for death is not the worst of all evils. Indeed. And I think that that's really, I think, really encapsulate the ethos of the Free State Project right there is the fact that, you know what, there are things worth fighting for. And it's not just, it's not just a, a bu- bumper sticker. It's not just a license plate. It's, it's a way of life, and they want to bring it and restore it here to New Hampshire. Why would, we, why would we not want to have those folks here in New Hampshire embrace them and, and invite them to come here and work and fight to, to expand freedom? Because, uh, it, because it upsets the progressive apple cart, well, just uh, like I we upset it. the, the establishment Republican that, but one. But I mean, but I mean they're, they're, I, I, I'm, I'm reading this uh, ultra extreme, and it's like if, if you talk to these people, it, you're right, this extreme idea that people should have control over their own lives. It, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen such delightful and happy children toddling around, though? Everybody's got these darling little curly-haired babes, and they're they're wandering around, and they're talking to people, and it's it's a it's a just a lovely atmosphere. Most of these folks are young. Yeah, and dogs too. And, and, of, and, and, and in case you notice, every every kid above the age of about eleven or twelve is selling something, pr- promoting capitalism. Absolutely. Right from an Want to buy age. a pin? <laughs> Want to buy a shirt? Want Absolutely. to buy a cookie? Absolutely. They're out earning a living. Cookies? <laughs> cookies? Oh, I got to get yeah. out of here. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> We saw ice cream yesterday. These, apparently, the kids haven't found their way into the media room for you guys, or else, or else, two things would be happening. You guys wouldn't be on the show because you'd be eating. And number two, they'd have a lot more money in their pocket. That's <laughs> they would. That they would. I got green squares of cloth. Rectangles. You'll trade for cookies. I'll yes. trade for cookies. Yep. Value for val- Actually, more value for more value, because that really is the essence of capitalism. Absolutely. If you have something to offer me, you're valuing my money more than I am. And I'm valuing what you have, be it something I can hold my hands or some other service, more than what I've got in my pocket. There that is go. the essence of capitalism. And this is what they're trying to destroy, that whole notion. So every time this topic comes up, and I know I'm getting recorded, I'm going to say, that's capitalism, folks. Yep. I'm not forced to buy something. Yes, that's, you are. Well, that's not capitalism. I understand that. You're forced, I mean, you're forced to buy a lot of government. That is true. Or a lot of things now that government is telling me I have to, it's good for you. Now we're back to David Pierce again. Um, and you know, the funny thing is, I, I've known David for a number of years when he first um, got elected to the House. And he's, uh, he's a very nice man. He's uh, got two little girls. He's, he's, he's a good dad. Um, He's from Texas. Um, Is that good or bad? Well, you know, those of us who who, who grew up or, or, or were born in Texas of, of parents who were serious about mm-hmm. Texas, um, we always tended to, and I probably still do, and I'm sure it shows many, many times, 
we were raised to feel sorry for people who weren't Texans. And, and, and <laughs> trust me, this happened just yesterday with Susan telling me she felt sorry for me about having white chicken chili. White chicken chili. There is no such thing as white chicken chili. There's white chicken soup. There's white chicken fondue, maybe. There's white chicken and she said, sandwich okay, bread. I have a she couple said, cans of that said, stuff at home I have to try. Me, she said, I'm not angry at you. I feel bad for you. <laughs> I do. I, and I can't. I mean, he just doesn't know any better. And when you were raised in Texas... <laughs> When you're right, and and I think that there are a lot of of liberals and progressives and people who eat white chicken chili that just don't know any better. Liberal, progressive, (laughs) anti. And and, and I live, and I want to educate folks, and I want to expose them to things that are real and that are proper. If you haven't been exposed, I can't say that you're bad. If you know better. If you know better, which I, I kind of think you do, but I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. If you don't know any better, I will show you real chili. It, and you'll go, what is this white chicken crap? <laughs> Susan. Yes? You know I like chili. You know that the chili I bring to your house is hotter than what most of the people who come can and, eat. And you don't put beans in it. I don't. I just I don't like beans in my chili. There's no such thing no. as chili with beans. Well, chili. this is chili for hot dog rolls. That's why I make my chili, and it's hot. And But I have a couple of those cans, I think, that you're referring to of white chicken he chili. Made it from, he did it deliberately. He didn't just open a can, for God's sake. It's premeditated. He looked at a recipe. Oh. That's, that's, a, th- that's a whole different thing, Skip. That's even worse, okay. huh? I guess, uh, I guess, but uh, but it's funny because we, uh, we had. We is that a, a lack of intelligent design? Is that? <laughs> 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 we, we actually brought we actually brought uh, one of our trainers who was in who was in yesterday, Anita Moncrief, who came up from Houston. Wow! And uh, boy, did, boy, did we she have inter- we have interviewed her before at yeah, Right Online. And extraordinary she, woman. She's an extraordinary woman. She was the Acorn whistleblower, and she does a fantastic job of explaining. Exactly what the tactics of the left are and how they bring folks in. She had a had a. Had a uh, they don't a do it with white chicken chili. I can tell you that. <laughs> Apparently not. But <laughs> even but a liberal <laughs> wouldn't fall for that. I'm saying there's a real Texas flavor, and apparently that flavor is not white chicken chili. That's <laughs> Liberty Forum 2015. <laughs> oh, You're never. Man. I'm never going to let that go, Greg. Well, clearly, I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> No, but more no. I, I, I mean, otherwise, that's your good kid. Yeah, it's, I think. I think that. Uh, I think that that uh, that the the just the, the uh, interaction and and the amount of ideas that I have that I've heard the new ideas and the new concepts. Um, seeing how many legislators are here today, uh, learning about what's going on ar- across the rest of the country. You know, I, I sorry to take this in such a serious direction, but you know, why why people, with us? <laughs> why people would actually want to attack this? I mean. I would, I would tell the folks like at Grand State Progress, why don't you actually try coming to Liberty Forum before you start attacking yeah. and actually see what you're talking about? Because they can't be, they will not put themselves into a place where they might actually have to change their world view. They're, they are only happy. Uh, here's the essence of the problem. We who are liberty-minded believe that we should be in control of ourselves. Everything is internalized. Yes, we express it in our works and in our deeds, but our essence is internalized. Progressives, on the other hand, don't believe in internal governorship. They want to say, here's what you can do, and oftentimes present a libert hold on, hold on, a libertine type of personal behavior, but all governance has to be external. And the, the typical uh, uh, the best example of that was Al Gore when he was running for president, when he went to that Hindu temple and got gobs of money from monks that had taken a vow of poverty. He said, there is no governing authority to prevent me from doing this. In other no words, controlling legal authority. Thank you. Thank you. I always, get, I always say, that, say that wrong. But in essence, mistakes were made. No. Passive let, voice. Let, let, Passive <laughs> voice. Mistakes were made. No. We, we go back to the no legal governing, uh, controlling authority. If the bars of external laws are not there, then everything is permissible. And that's where you see all of these laws coming up to control everything because they don't believe we are capable of controlling ourselves, that, which is the essence of freedom. Then I'm going to have to apologize to you. About the white chicken chili? If you want to make white chicken chili, <laughs> okay. I am free to do so. You are. Free to choose. But it's not now, chili. <laughs> but, but understand that you're doing it 
in opposition to the preponderance of evidence that says if you go back to Texas that somebody won't kick your ass. <laughs> so make your chili. I'm not going to judge you. It's a good thing when I was in Dallas last Greg, August. No one, I didn't mention yeah, this. Greg, Greg about this. You, you're not going to have to go to Texas. <laughs> It's the the ass kicking's right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two days of it. <laughs> and perhaps it's it's my fondness for tradition and things that um, make sense and 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 time tested standards that make me oppose white chicken chili. But you should be free to make it. <laughs> I'm going to... I got a blessing so with the Susan. I cannot Steve, continue to make white chicken Steve's chili. Steve's been taking lots of notes. I can't wait to see the write-up of this segment. <laughs> the white chicken chili segment. What are you talking about? But, oh, and there is some mention of this thing called Liberty Form. Yeah. <laughs> oh, indeed. Well, uh, you ought to be able to have white chicken chili That's at Liberty right. Form. There it is. Exactly. Uh, maybe we had an idea for next year. There you go. Over so, Tex-Mex rice. And I mean, we ha we, we've had Vermin Supreme here. We've had you know a number of, of uh, important dignitaries uh, here and uh, and, and but, but but as I mentioned uh, to, to, to me the, re the really exciting part aren't aren't some of the the, the more well-known folks it's it really are people who've shown up for the first Liberty Forum coming from places like Connecticut yeah. coming from places as far as California I've yeah. heard people who's come from young woman yeah and I and I've spoken to people from all across this country who said who said I don't know what what caused me to come here? Well, I don't know what the one thing was, but I just felt like I needed change. And when you start to get to an environment where people are in places where, even some places where it aren't as bad as Connecticut or California, and you start to hear people coming from states that aren't that bad say, I want to come to New Hampshire because I think there's a chance to reclaim liberty here in New Hampshire. I got to tell you, it's an inspiring message. Yeah. Screw D.C., save New Hampshire. That's my motto. Yeah. So, so yeah, well, I mean, this is I, this but is. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's interesting. I mean, which is not to say that th there's a the reservoir of good I ideas uh, exists exclusively exclusively in in Hampshire. I mean, this this week, this past week, uh, two things happened in uh, that that sort of sort of in the Senate deadlocked twelve twelve on right to work, and in, in New Hampshire, but the state of Wisconsin just passed right to work. Yeah. And how, through their house yesterday, and Governor Walker says he's going to sign it on Monday. So I mean, twelve, twelve. I have to ask the question. You know who it was? S did Senator Stiles vote against right to work? No. Carson did. No, no, she did not. Uh, it's it's she it, did not. Carson she and seriously, yes. Carson and Bradley was it? Uh, Carson and Booten voted Carson against. Carson and Booten. Oh. Uh, but they've. Con I mean, it, to be to be fair, they have consistently voted against right to work. They, they have, have never voted for right to work. That's true. So that doesn't mean that I'm we not, still can't I'm go just, after them. I, I suspect Senator Stiles has been given cover. Oh. Twelve twelve. She didn't. She wasn't forced to vote against it. Okay. And, uh, for, for lots of reasons, Sen and we all understand that Senator people get Stiles, votes for cover. Sen Senator Stiles actually actually voted uh, has consistently voted for right to work for for a number of years. So I, you know, well, I there mean, you okay. go. Then I'm thinking of the wrong issue. That people are not people are not necessarily as granular as you might think. Oh yeah, they are. So, but Yay, but I think that but I think that it, it's just a, just a point is 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 it is it here in Wisconsin, a state like Wisconsin, a state that's considered a blue state. Just passed right to work, mm -hmm. and it's going. They're going to be the 25th state to become a right to work state, following a state like Michigan, was all, which was 24. <laughs> Michigan. So if Michigan and Wisconsin can pass right to work, what are we waiting for? You know, for? I would wow. be happy just to be able to say the state is no longer going to collect your dues out of your paycheck. Let the unions take it yourself, and is I'd be paycheck, happy with just that. Paycheck protection and right to work, the two of them together, obviously. Well. Right. Yeah. Just like what we have seen in Wisconsin, that if the unions have to go and tell their members to fork it over, most of those members are going, I ain't forking it over anymore. And that comes back to what I said about the consumer marketplace. If you are not giving me good value for my money, the pure again, going back to the most individual level of capitalism, if you are not providing good value for the money you want from me, I don't have to give you your money, give me, give you my money. I, yeah. I, 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 well, the, the, to my mind, there, there are two, there's a distinction that needs to be drawn between private sector unions and public sector unions, okay? okay. A private sector union, whether it's, I don't know, IBEW, bunch of folks out on utility lines, um, you are not, a, a company is not necessarily compelled to engage a union electrical group. Now... However, if you want to work for the state of New Hampshire, which is working for taxpayers and working for uh, the people whose pockets are picked for that tax money, 
The New Hampshire state government is a closed shop. You are required to sign a voluntary payroll deduction form that says, Either I will join the union. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will Compelled to voluntarily? That's what? what it says. That's what it's called. I'll post it up on. I've done it before. It's called fair share. You That's either the euphemism. join the share. union or you pay the fee. And, and I see that cannot. Mr. Words Have Meanings is sitting in, in the uh, Exactly. I'm going to turn this in. Because <laughs> he's right. In, in the batting <laughs> circle. But, but understand that, that one of the things I think that you'll find here at Liberty Forum that's an interesting discussion is that private sector unions are contractually based. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I and, and you enter into contra contracts freely for the most part, right? But if you are a state government and I can't go to work for the Department of Fish and Game and become a fish cop without joining the union, then I am the new the state of New Hampshire's government is not pro-choice. Yeah. So well, I'm going to give this you know, to uh, at to least Ian. with um, the unions, the private sector unions, they have the ability to you know take away our hostess Twinkies when they when their demands become too much. But, you know, that's a self-correcting thing because we now have Twinkies again. Well, Not that Congress I'm allowed to thankfully. have them anymore. <laughs> yeah. That is thankfully, a, is a, thankfully. We put the camera on the Twinkies, please. That's right. <laughs> There's 50 pounds less of Twinkies. I know you've been And good. ice cream good. and br awesome. brownies. I've almost given up chocolate chip cookies. Although, where are those little kids with the cookies? I think I'm, cutting I'm going back on the, uh, the one or two actual uh, sugar-sweetened uh, Mountain Dews a week will help a little, too. Uh, it it well it's also saying willpower. Well, well yeah. You know yeah. my voluntary. Yeah. Was it voluntary? <laughs> <laughs> no, voluntary. no, your stomach told you. Your stomach said, "Stop <laughs> drinking that crap." Yeah, the Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah. But we're back to the water again. Your body is. Which is uh, just Mountain you, Dew you, without you, all the other stuff. How do you stay awake? It. Huh? How do you stay awake? Willpower. Okay. Willpower, and I get mad at some of our politicians. That's all I need. <laughs> get well, you wound up. Oh, uh, yes, it does. And we are now joined by Ian Underwood, the guy who makes my See, head hurt all the time. Greg, I want to say thank you very much for stopping in. Have thank fun. You. I'm going to get out of here at some point so I can go walk around. Clock TV.